What's up guys, my name is Liam, and today we're going to be taking a look at a rework on a classic, the Zowie GSR2. This has been a staple in the FPS community, they've made some changes to it, and I've been really enjoying the new version a lot. But, is this going to be the perfect gaming mouse pad for you? Let's check it out. And before we get started today, I did want to let you know this was sent out to me by Zowie, but everything you're going to be hearing in this video are going to be my own words and my own opinions. This did arrive to my front door in the same old fashioned type of boxing. So when you do pull it out, that does take quite a bit of time before it actually flattens out and it does lay completely flat on the desk. It took a while, it did have kind of curled up edges and it still kind of does. I've been using this for about a month now, but uh, overall I haven't noticed too many issues with it, aside from the fact that it just took a while before it actually laid flat. The overall build is pretty similar to before. You have a width of 470 millimeters by 390 millimeters in height, and it sits at 3.5 millimeters in thickness. They're still using the uniform high density rubber base and it did a pretty good job of sticking to my desk. It doesn't do as good of a job as some of the porn pads pads out there where they actually do suction to the surface of the disc. But if you have used a Zowie mouse pad before, then you should know what to expect. The stitching also looks very similar to the previous versions, if not the exact same. I have owned older versions of this pad that I no longer have in my possession, but I did recently, a couple months back, purchase the original GSR-1 and the stitching looks pretty similar on both of them to me. You don't really notice too much of a difference. I do feel like the stitching is about on level with the surface. If not, it might stick up just a little bit higher. But as I was gaming and using this, I didn't notice too many issues with the stitching to where it stuck up too much or it was bothering my arm while I was gaming on it. They still have this tag up here in the top left corner and when you flip it over it does say BenQ the right way up. I usually flip the tag down over here to the bottom right side because I find myself coming up here in the top left corner of my mouse pad when I'm gaming as opposed to I never really come down the bottom right corner but that is always an option where you can just keep it up here or down there whatever works best for you and when I did have it down here in the bottom right corner it never got in my way as I was using it. The surface however is where they made the majority of the changes and in my opinion as I've been testing this next to the original GSR that's only a couple months old. I've probably been using this for around a month now and they do feel pretty different from one another. When I first started using the GSR 2 it did feel quite a bit faster and I do feel like over time that's kind of slowed down a little bit but with that being said I still feel like that whether I start using it at the beginning of the day to the end of the day I do feel like overall this feels much more consistent and it doesn't feel as muddy as the older version where you just kind of never really knew what you were going to get especially if you're living in a high humidity environment. And to prepare myself for the arrival of this pad, I actually did start using the original Zowie GSR and I used it nonstop for a couple days, right up until the time that this released. And the first thing I noticed when I pulled this out of the box is how much quicker it did feel. Not only does the GSR have a much quicker glide along the X and the Y axis compared to the original one, but I don't feel like it feels as muddy when you get down into the micro adjustments. When I was gaming on the original GSR, I really feel like faster paced games like Apex Legends where there's lots of high tracking and lots of quick movements or changes in direction that it was a lot harder to stay consistent with my tracking and moving a lot quicker especially coming to a stop and when I had to make those tiny micro adjustments. And though the GSR2 does still offer a great sense of control and there is a bit of muddiness there I don't feel like it's too overwhelming and I feel like this pad was much easier to track on and it kind of is more in the line with something like the Lethal Gaming Gear Saturn Pro when it comes to the overall speed. And with the time I've spent using this over the past month. The one thing about the base is it does feel a lot more firm than the other offerings with the pour on. So it does feel like it's a lot more consistent to me and it does kind of speed up the pad a lot more. Even though I do feel like this does have a great sense of control and stopping power overall, it is more similar to something like the Artisan Mid Base when it comes to the overall firmness of it. And for those of you that own the Razor Viper Mini Signature Edition, the skates that do come included on this mouse are incredibly thin. And one problem that I have with using some of these pour on base pads, especially if they're a greater thickness or they're a bit softer, is it does push into the pad really easily and it's very easy to scratch the bottom of your mouse when you're using it if you're applying a lot of pressure on top of it. And though I still can push hard and scratch the bottom of the Razor Viper Mini Signature Edition on top of the Zowie GSR2, I do feel like it is a lot more consistent and I'm not scratching the bottom of my mouse as consistently as I was on top of some of the other softer pads. So I found that that was one pretty good benefit about the actual firmness of the base. Obviously, if you are going to be using smaller skates, especially corner skates or dot 
shot skates. It does have a little bit less friction. You still get great control and stopping properties, but it is a little bit faster. As we all know, the Logitech G Pro Superlight 2 skates are really slow and they're not the best example to use. But even as I was testing out larger style skates with something like the Tiger Ice V2s, they did give you a little bit more control, static and dynamic friction across the surface. I was also testing it with the brand new Pulsar Super Glide 2s, the more controlled glass style skates. I didn't really like the way that these performed on the surface. I do feel like it does give you quite a bit more of the static friction and it feels a lot muddier when you're trying to make micro adjustments, but it does have a pretty smooth glide overall. So if you are looking for a little bit of a quicker glide, these do offer a little bit more quicker than the PTFE skates. But again, I just feel like that little static friction and the micro adjustments, it did make it quite a bit harder with these controlled style glass skates. The original style glass skates, which is the smoother feeling, I do feel like you get a really smooth glide on top of the surface, but these glass skates, they do feel really muddy on the surface. And you do get a little bit less of the initial static friction here when you're going back and forth. But if you're really pushing to it, it really does slow down and it gives you a much more muddy feeling compared to the PTFE skates. And then finally, I do feel like these Sapphire skates perform really good on the surface. You still have a great sense of control. These did give me the lowest initial friction out of all the other types of skates that I did try. And you do get a really smooth glide. You still also get a great sense of stopping power, but overall I do feel like they feel a little bit quicker with a little bit less static friction, initial friction than the PTFE skates or anything else that I did test out out there. I was also testing out the surface with a sleeve and it doesn't get as sticky or caught on something like the Artisan FX Zero, but I didn't feel like wearing a sleeve personally offered it too much of an advantage as far as the actual glide of my forearm went over the surface of the pad. The only way I can really see you benefiting from using an arm sleeve on the surface is if you really just don't like the texture, even though the texture on the surface isn't too bad it wasn't too bothersome for me but if you were someone who likes wearing long sleeve shirts or something like that you can pull it off on the pad but i don't see it offering too much of an advantage over not wearing a sleeve at all. And when it comes to comparing the original GSR to the new GSR2, again, when it comes to the overall build, these feel really similar to one another, but the performance of the surface, they do feel pretty different from one another. As you can see here, the GSR2 it has a much smoother glide and it is a bit quicker too. So I do feel like on the original GSR, it does offer you a lot more control, a lot more stopping power. For those of you that have made this pad or use it a lot, know that it doesn't do very well in humidity. And depending on the time of the day or how the humidity goes you never really know what you're going to get so i do feel a lot more consistency with the gsr2 i do currently live in a high humid environment and i noticed that the surface has not been impacted hardly at all with the gsr2 now that's not always the case it can actually impact the skates that you're using i have noticed on more humid days that the skates on the g pro super light 2 do kind of slow down a little bit regardless of what pad that i'm using but i have also tested out other skates to make sure that this wasn't just an issue with the pad itself and other skates that I have that are more consistent through humidity, they seem to perform equally as good on top of the GSR2 on the not so humid parts of the day as compared to the very humid times. And to demonstrate the differences between the GSR1 versus the GSR2, here is a glide test. And next up, when comparing the GSR2 to the GSR SE, I do feel like the GSR SE, even though the speed of both of these is pretty similar to one another, the GSR SE does feel a little bit quicker and it definitely doesn't have as good of stopping power or control properties compared to the GSR2. I know that the GSR SE is one of the most popular pads of all time when it comes to first person shooters. And I must say that the improvements on the GSR2, I have absolutely been preferring it over the GSRE myself personally. Again, I just feel like you get a really smooth glide and it does give you just a little bit greater of control properties without, in my opinion, feeling too muddy or too much different. The performance of these is actually pretty close to one another. On the GSR SE, you do notice a little bit less of the initial static friction. And even as it's sliding across the pad, both of these kind of have a similar type of dynamic friction, but I do feel like overall, you do feel a greater sense of control with the GSR2. And as you're coming across your glide on the GSR2, as you're pushing into it, you do notice a greater sense of stopping power as well. So let's go ahead and drop the glide comparison test between the GSR SE and the GSR2. All right, then finally, when comparing the GSR2 to the Lethal Gaming Gear Saturn Pro, and this is the soft version at 3.5 millimeters. The performance between both of these is not that far apart from one another. They do feel pretty similar in terms of speed goes, but when you are using them, they do feel quite a bit different. I do feel like the 
Saturn Pro, it feels a little bit faster in terms of the fact that you have less initial static friction. So it is a little bit easier on the Saturn Pro to make the micro adjustments. And you do still get a pretty decent sense of dynamic control as you're making your glide across with good stopping power. But I would say the difference between these two is, is even though the GSR2 does feel slower, you do feel like you get a bit more of control. The fact that the GSR has a bit more of a firm and stiffer base, it does kind of make it match the overall speed in the glide of the Saturn. Whereas the Saturn does have a softer and more plush pad, it is a little bit easier to push into and it does give you pretty good stopping powers if you were to push into it pretty firmly. So even though these do feel a little different when you're using them next to each other as far as their overall dynamic and static properties go, the speed on both of them is pretty similar to one another across the glide. And here's the glide test comparison between the Saturn Pro and the GSR2. Coming in at $34.99, I do feel like this pad is priced nicely even though there is a lot more competition out there right now that is currently on the market. And my time with using the GSR2, I honestly really like this pad a lot and I love the surface. This has actually made me start to kind of lean a little bit more towards firmer bases due to the fact that I like to play on various types of mice. I like to use dot skates. I like to use corner skates. And it is nice when you are using a firmer base. With this mouse pad, you do get the same type of control properties, but it isn't too plush. It doesn't seem like it sinks in too much if you're putting too much weight on your mouse or pushing into it as easily as some of the softer pads. So really great to see how consistently this performs. Even while playing faster first person shooter games, I really feel like this thing worked great across the board. And even though some of the specs kind of fall short compared to some of the other offerings that are out there on the market, I really do feel like that the consistency and performance has been one of my top performing pads that I've used so far this year. So for me personally, the GSR2 isn't gonna be going anywhere anytime soon. It's absolutely gonna stay on my desk. I'm gonna continue using it, especially in games like Valorant and CSGO 2, where I really do feel like it shines and it offers really great and smooth performance with incredible control and stopping properties. All right, so if you have any questions, I feel like I left anything out, please let me know down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video and are interested in seeing more videos like this in the future, please drop this video a like and subscribe to my channel. I've left affiliate links down in the description below for some of these products if you're interested in checking them out and supporting the channel. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to seeing you guys in the next one.